Okay, think about this for a second. Losing a tooth. For basically all of human history, that's meant it's gone. For good. Right. We accept it. Bridges. Implants. Dentures. That's just how it is. But what if that fundamental rule, what if it's about to break? What if naturally regrowing a lost tooth isn't science fiction anymore, but like actually happening? This isn't just tweaking dental tech. It feels like, well, a potential revolution. Okay, let's unpack this. It really is a massive potential shift. Mm -hmm. uh, the research we've been digging into points towards a genuine paradigm change. We're moving potentially way beyond just patching things up or replacing them. I mean, dentistry's done an amazing job managing tooth loss with artificial stuff for ages. Yeah. But the breakthroughs we're looking at today, Gem. they suggest a future where our own bodies could be, I don't know, prompted, hmm. reminded maybe to yeah. regenerate what was lost. Yeah, the sources we've gathered from scientific studies to uh, industry reports, they paint a pretty compelling picture. Yeah. It feels transformative. Yeah. And that's exactly our mission for this deep dive. We want pull back the curtain on this, explore the science, you know, figure out where things stand right now, who might benefit first, and of course, the bigger picture, the implications for well, all of dental care. So get ready, because what we're about to share might just make you rethink what you thought your body was capable of. Right, let's start with that core belief. Humans just don't regrow teeth after childhood. For anyone who knows a bit about biology, this has always been like an absolute, a, a given. You get your baby teeth, then your adult ones, and that's your lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, sharks cycling through teeth or gators regrowing them. We've been stuck, one set and done, until maybe now. Because here's where it gets really interesting. That fundamental idea, that biological dead end, it's being seriously challenged by some pretty groundbreaking research. Precisely. Yeah, this new research confronts that idea head on. It strongly suggests our bodies might still have this, uh, latent ability, a dormant capacity for tooth regeneration. Our sources point to a really key study. It was published in PubMed back in 2021. It focused on something called anti-USA G1 antibodies. And this wasn't just theory. The study showed real potential for treating conditions like hypodontia. Hypodontia, that's where people are born missing some teeth. Exactly, they're congenitally missing teeth. Okay. So think about what that means. This isn't just a small tweak to our understanding. It's yeah. It's a fundamental reevaluation of our biology. It suggests we might have overlooked our own built-in regenerative toolkit. It opens this remarkable door, not just for everyday tooth loss, but for these specific genetic conditions too. It's like finding a hidden switch. Okay, so if this switch exists, this dormant blueprint, yeah. how do we flip it? What's the key that unlocks that potential? Is there like one specific discovery driving this? There absolutely is. And it centers around a, well, a really innovative drug candidate called TRG035. And this isn't just an idea on paper, it's a tangible thing being developed. It came from this brilliant team of Japanese researchers uh, at Katana Hospital working with a company called Toragem Biopharma. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's causing such a stir, its main function, is to actually stimulate tooth regrowth inside the body. Wow, a drug that basically tells your body, hey, make another tooth. That's astonishing. But how, how does it do that? What's the actual mechanism? Is it putting something new in or? No, and if we connect this to the bigger picture, that's the key point. It's not about implants or complex surgery. It's really about reactivating a natural process, mm. one that's just gone quiet in most adults. Yeah. So TRG035 works by targeting a specific protein. It's called USAG1. Yeah. And you can think of USAG1 as like a, a natural break. An inhibitor. A stop signal. Exactly. A stop signal for tooth development that our bodies naturally produce especially after our permanent teeth are in place. The crucial insight, and this connects back to that 2021 PubMed study, was that if you inhibit USAG1, so TRG035, acts like a very precise key to turn off this top signal, you significantly boost something called BMP signaling. Okay, BMP signaling, what does that do? Right, BMP stands for bone morphogenetic protein. BMP signaling is basically the body's master controller for building bones and, importantly for us, teeth. It's like the architect's plan and the construction crew combined. It guides stem cells to actually form new tooth structures. Ah, I see. So TRG035 isn't adding foreign stuff. It's just removing the roadblock, taking the foot off the brake, you could say. That allows the body's own tooth building machinery to kick back into gear. So it's unlocking something we already have. Precisely. It's like finding the on switch for a process we assumed was terminally off. It yeah. lets the natural construction start again. It's really quite an elegant approach. And what makes this feel so real, so tangible, is that TRG035 isn't just stuck in a lab somewhere. It's actually shown success already, hasn't it? Not just in theory, but in practice. It's moved past those very early stages with some pretty impressive results. What did those animal trials show? 
Yeah, the journey from lab bench to bedside is always tough, but TRG-035 has cleared some major hurdles. It showed success in tests with both mice and, interestingly, ferrets. And these weren't just casual checks. They were looking for specific things. Yeah. Clear evidence of new teeth forming, proper integration into the jaw, and, crucially, safety. That's always paramount. Ferrets. Why ferrets? Well, ferrets actually have teeth that are continuously replaced, a bit like sharks, but different. it's called polyphyodont dentition. So they make a really good model for studying this kind of regeneration. The success in these animals gave the strong data needed to say, okay, this seems effective and it seems safe enough to move to the really critical next step. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the big leap. And these human trials, they're not just planned for the future, are they? They've actually started. So who gets this first? Who are the initial patients for something this groundbreaking? Yes, exactly. The human trials are underway. They kicked off pretty recently, September 2024, over at Kyoto University Hospital in Japan. And this raises that important question, who benefits first? The initial group is very specific and honestly quite moving. It's children, children aged two to seven who have congenital tooth deficiency. Specifically, that condition we mentioned, hypodontia. Wow. So kids born without a full set of teeth. That's right. Imagine the differences could make in a child's life. I mean, traditionally, these kids faced years of complex dental work often painful, definitely expensive, affecting comfort, self-esteem. This drug offers a shot at a totally different future, a full set of their own natural teeth. It's a very focused start, yes, but it addresses a really profound need. That really is. Yeah, incredibly hopeful. Starting there makes a lot of sense, but it makes you think bigger, obviously. If this proves successful, if it eventually becomes widely available, I mean, what does this actually mean for the future of dentistry? Yeah. Like the everyday practice, we could be looking at a genuine revolution here. Well, the timeline they're aiming for is ambitious. Our sources suggest a target for market availability. Uh huh. Possibly as early as 2030. 2030, that's really not far off. It isn't, relatively speaking. And if they hit that, yes, this could fundamentally change dental care. We'd likely see a significant reduction in relying on traditional methods, implants, bridges, maybe even dentures for some cases. There was a report mentioned in our sources, the 2025 Luminance Dentaire report. It already anticipates this kind of shift moving away from just repair and replace towards regenerate and restore. So fixing the root cause, literally. Exotic. Exactly. It means potentially moving from just managing the consequences of tooth loss to actively reversing it. For patients, that means getting back natural function, natural appearance, avoiding issues with foreign materials. It's about using our own biology, not just engineering workarounds, better long-term health, better quality of life, the impact on the whole industry could be immense. Okay, but with any massive breakthrough like this, there's always that um, that elephant in the room, the practical side, cost. The science is amazing, mm -hmm. but making it accessible, that's always the next hurdle, isn't it? The sources did mention some early figures. Pretty high cost, something like, what, $10,000 per batch? That's, well, that's a lot. It is, and this immediately brings up that crucial societal question. How do we make sure a treatment like this reaches everyone who needs it? not just those who can afford it. Mm -hmm. High costs, especially when a drug first launches, often create a big barrier. It could potentially limit this therapy to people with significant financial resources or really comprehensive insurance that covers these kinds of cutting edge treatments. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge almost all revolutionary medical advances face, right? Mm -hmm. Bridging that gap between a scientific win and equitable access for patients. After have to remember, the cost reflects not just making the drug, but decades of R&D, rigorous testing, huge investments. Hopefully, as production scales up, as it becomes more established, costs might come down. That's the usual pattern. But it definitely forces a wider conversation about health policy, insurance, how yeah. we value these radical improvements. Absolutely. That innovation versus access tension, it's always complex. So just to kind of bring it all together, it's genuinely incredible thinking about this journey from challenging that age-old belief about human biology to this specific drug, TRG-035, developed by those researchers in Japan targeting the USAG1 protein, basically flipping a switch to let new teeth grow. We've heard about its success in animals, the really hopeful launch of human trials for kids with missing teeth, and this ambitious goal, maybe by 2030, having it available, it points to a future that could just completely rewrite dental care. And it's a journey, right? Like all science. 
It's about continuous discovery, refinement. It really shows the power of dedicated research, not just making small improvements, but fundamentally changing what we think is possible medically. Mm -hmm. The long-term impact goes beyond just replacing one tooth. It's about pushing boundaries in regeneration itself. It could offer hope for conditions we thought were untreatable, maybe even give us clues about regenerating other tissues, other organs down the line. It's just well, it's an ongoing story of human ingenuity, isn't it? Understanding our own biology. It truly is. So as you think about everything we've unpacked today, here's something to mull over. Beyond those first kids getting treatment, what happens if tooth loss really isn't permanent anymore? What new economic landscapes, what societal shifts might that create? How could it reshape health insurance or even just how we think about aging in our bodies in a world where you can quite literally regrow what you've lost?